Here. background checks and everything has been done uh, and they are ready for you. We'll see them on this, I think it's action item number nine under police applicant one and two. If you could please act accordingly on that tonight, I would greatly appreciate that. Um, with that, we will add to obviously police coverage and uh, you'll see some changes in the amount of officers that are out in the time. Does anyone have any questions for myself? Chief? I got the there. And with that, I'd like to thank everyone. Thank you. Under announcements, uh, the ECNR uh, full art grant, the borough is not awarded that grant, but we have some plans for that. Uh, the majority of that was the plan for the uh, Memorial Park renovations. So we have some more information on that under the agenda this evening plan moving forward with that. We were unfortunately not awarded that, that grant. Uh, next is a, a, a thank you uh, to Mountain View Restoration. Uh, we had the request of the neighbors uh, due to the fire on Cole Street over on the west side of the pipe section of the town. Uh, some of the neighbors voiced concerns to the borough regarding the safety of its structure. Uh, so the borough did investigate and solicited some uh, proposals from firms to go and secure some of the structure uh, and do some cleanup. Uh, we went ahead and engaged Mountain View Restoration uh, to do the work uh, for the borough and they did this work at no cost uh, to the borough. So we would like to extend a big thank you to John Keel and Mount View Restoration for stepping up and helping the community uh, in light of the fire, the unfortunate fire over on Cole Street and them coming and helping us clean up the site. So again, thank you for them for doing that on behalf of the borough. Drought watch has been lifted, been notified by the DEP. Uh, next item, uh, at the workshop, there was some question regarding the silk mode restoration steering committee update and the number of meetings. Uh, there was comment made that the meetings were not properly recorded 
and upon further review of the federal office staff, they did verify that there was in fact five of those steering committee update meetings. So the allegation that that was not accurate, that was made by one of the council members at the workshop, uh, is in itself a statement that was not accurate. There were five meetings. Thank you to the office staff for in particular for clarifying that. My apologies for the outburst at the workshop meeting. And I appreciate you. It was a question, not an outburst. Do not continue to insult me, Greg, just because you don't agree with me. Thank 
you, the elected borough council members, for being here, for making decisions for the good of all people. Looking back to 1967, our family agreed to give up their land 500 plus acres at $20 an acre for the then created Montana Creek watershed project. According to our family documents, if they had not agreed to the recreation authority terms, a condemnation process would begin. That decision by our family, along with other families in the area, that no doubt may have had their own dreams of what that would have represented for their children and their heirs in the future. Those decisions made then by a few have benefited all of us. And the generation yet to come, not to mention the many wildlife species that call it their own. Their decision in 1867 years ago had protected Jim Thorpe residents from flooding and providing clean drinking water for the part of the town. If you decide to change existing zoning regulation, that will benefit the developer. The local news article of February 6th stated 60 acres are noted with the ban on possibly selling 45 to Carbonham, leaving the remaining 10 acres. What will happen if the remaining five acres? I guess the point is to be careful what we read. Does it mean 10 and 1 acre lots for the antiseptic systems on the 10 acres? The article stated that the current landowner will put in place the restrictions. What are they? Where are they? Secondary door generators located where on that slope. Septic tank safeguards, septic tank cleaning schedule. Who will enforce these guards? Safeguards, sorry. After the lots are sold, you the girl. Changing the zoning regulation that exists, what effect will that have upon the lot owners in the immediate area? Example is there's a 76 acre tract directly behind an upslope of the 55 acres in question. Who has the right of way literally straight up the mountain from the Lens Trail across from the park county and exit? Every one of us live in a watershed. Our everyday use of our precious clean water can end up in an aquifer, low stream or river. Washing our cars, power washing our homes, lawn care products, run off, we'll end up down the street. We delay the many products warning us not to use near waterways. Expired prescription drugs often are discarded and properly into our sewer systems. Walking along Lennon's Trail, you can see where the highway culprits collect the mountain surface for water runoff and channel it under the road to the south of the lake extreme side. Add to that the proposed 10 to 60 driveways that will intersect the highway, some of which would be near the main entrance of the lake. The majority of Carver County voters cast their ballots in favor of protecting our open spaces, farms, woodlands, and streets. Why not take that to the next step and acquire the whole track? Buyer beware, this land was purchased a few years back in 2020. The zoning was in place at that time. This property is part of a larger tract of land taken for the construction of Mont Chunk Creek Watershed Project back then. Did the buyer not know the existing zoning regulations at the time of purchase? What has changed? Was he thinking he could convince a few to make the change to benefit a few? We hope the council members will make the decision to protect the area for many to enjoy. We ask, is this spot zoning? And thank you for your time. Thank you. Just a quick observation with the group that's here this evening. Is there any opposition to any of the recreational activities that have been at the lake? I said, is there any opposition from the group here this evening in regard to any of the recreational activities, any environmental concerns with any of the recreation that was on the lake, swimming, boating? No, 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 no,
council clear that the borough was very diligent in collecting the fee for change of use for me. And uh, this developer is not even from June 4, and you don't, you're not collecting on the fee which is required according to the fee schedule. Thank you.
that goes off in the middle of the night during a rainstorm and set up your system because there's no protocol to how to deal with now this emergency. An alarm really means nothing at all. And uh, the last point I would like to make would be that if there are these 12 points coming in, uh, what's the stop for that in 24 or you know 1,200 in the future? Or, or if they say, well, if I got in, you know, if he got in, then I don't want in. So you know, it just seems like the one is asking for uh, extremely high benefits from all the residents, and then the 12 who buy the homes will get their benefits because they get to look at the lake, and everybody that lives downstream has to pay when the drinking water system you have to have filtration or all these other things. Uh, that I don't know why uh, maybe this landowner sh shouldn't have maybe a million dollars in escrow for 30 years in which the life the life out of a septic system that we have to improve the system. That's what's best for the money comes from. Thank you. Thank you. Like it is. Okay. What I'm saying, my point in saying that is, 
the municipal line to be extended out there and the property could be developed. That's my point. No, it can't. No, it can't. No, it can't. No, it can't. The municipal line cannot be extended out to the property. I'm saying that there's no way they can develop it. I'll do my presentation. Go ahead. Okay. Hello, council members. Hello, Mr. Mayor. My name is Ben Price. I live in Bonus Town. Uh, I'm with the city of Carbon County, and I'm also a, an employee of, of uh, the Community Environmental Legal Defense Fund. I've stood before our councils, uh, municipalities, and throughout Pennsylvania and across the country to talk about lots of issues, and development is certainly one of them, land use. Um, I, the question before, as I understand it, before the council has to do uh, with whether or not it will change the zoning ordinance in order to defer to the interests and the wishes of the landowner. And while it's important that we respect property rights and, and the um, wishes of people, uh, how they want to use their land, uh, there is a line that we can draw as communities uh, where there are limitations to those uses. And that's where it impacts <coughs> the interests, the rights, the health and safety and welfare of the community at large because property lines don't stop toxins and pollutants and things from moving across those lines. Now, in 2013, uh, we were working with a community in southwestern Pennsylvania, Robinson Township, who sued the, the township, sued the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. It was an over a fracking issue, but it was within the realm of zoning and land use. And it took quite a while for the Supreme Court to finally get involved, but the Pennsylvania Supreme Court did. And in 2013, their decision was mixed. Um, the, the municipality did not get everything they wanted, but one thing that we got, all of us in Pennsylvania got, was a clear message from the state Supreme Court. And that is that Article 1, Section 27 of the Pennsylvania Constitution which declares that all residents of Pennsylvania have a right to clean air, water, and soil, and that the state, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, has an obligation to protect those natural resources for the use of Pennsylvanians, all Pennsylvanians, not just landowners, and future generations. But more significantly, of course, now that, that Article 1, Section 27 was added to the Constitution, in 1967, and it was activated by law of the legislature a few years later. What was impressive to me about the 2013 Supreme Court decision was when the court declared that it's not just people at the state level, it's not just the DEP, and it's not just the legislature or the courts or the governor who have the obligation to oversee and protect those environmental rights of all Pennsylvanians at every level of the, the, whether at the state level, the administrative level, or the municipal level, you, members of council, have an obligation to protect the constitutional rights of the residents who are your constituents. Landowners certainly are among those constituents, but their use and ownership of land is not an extra source of rights. It's one person, one vote, not one acre, one vote. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. I believe what council meant was residential development 
ends up creating these six special zone units. Which man? I believe so. I think that's a conversation. I just, I, I recall uh, the word that the person has the right to develop it because it's within the residential zone area. So tonight, I took the liberty to bring a map from the Carver County GIS map office that shows the special protective zoning that includes a tenant property. Read the special designation zoning definition. I wonder if we can do that again. This evening. I sure can. Just give me one moment to pull up the code. I was on my Google Docs. While you're looking for that, I might add that the special zoning is here to protect the integrity of water to ensure the safety of the mob chunk drinking supply. Flagstaff Road, anything about that? It's the start of the special district, and this house is all along on the strand. So, so in the other side, this is a map. There should be a chart for the uses. Uh, I have this. I have this. Look up family dwelling, and we'll tell you what zoning districts that use is permitted in. And the gentleman behind me just read me with the definition. I'll read it for you. Thank you. Statement of purpose. It is the purpose of the special district to allow the use of land and land. Single-family detached dwellings is item number three. Does it talk about the number of dwellings, or is it the first you have one dwelling on the property? It says that it's a permitted use, and there are single-family dwellings in that district. Do we agree 95%? So 
tonight to express my concern for the well-being of our council. When I say well-being, what I mean is the state of unity that forms the council as one. When you're elected borough council, we as residents are asking you to put our best interests in front of your own. The residents have asked for years for transparency. We want to be informed on all happenings within the borough, big or small. Recently, that transparency was granted, giving the public a chance to follow council meetings from home via live streaming meetings. While we do appreciate this, it is concerning that only specific meetings are being live streamed. With the exception of executive meetings, it's hard to understand this. If council is attending meetings, live streaming is a simple task. Almost everyone here knows this. With that, dictating what one specific council person is posting on their own personal social media pages is also obstructing that transparency that we've asked for. Councilwoman Crowley has been honest, upfront, and completely straightforward. She has researched the complicated issues and informed the public of what is happening within our town. She has brought forward information, facts, and constructive advice to council when others will sit glassy-eyed awaiting instruction from the borough manager. I have personally gotten more information from Ms. Crowley's social media than I have from the borough website. Her approach has brought our town and its issues to the surface, and this is clearly something that our local government is not comfortable with or used to. While her appearance and personal beliefs differ from most of our council members, the one thing we all have in common is a love for our town. Jim Thorpe is as unique as the people who live here, a melting pot of religions and nationalities. I would hate to think that we live in a town that could potentially fall backwards into discrimination and veiled misogyny. This behavior is exactly what is deterring your community away from future votes and is a blatant and obvious display of mistress of power. To use the excuse that Ms. Crowley is rarely in attendance is absurd. I attended every council meeting, almost, from January 2022 to June of 2022, while trying to bring our council the voice of the people supporting our role of rank. In that six months, I couldn't tell you what Kyle Shetler looked like. I don't know if he even attended a single meeting, let alone the important ones. Oh, but you're but it's personal it's when it's me, isn't it though? I want to thank you, Ms. Crowley, for always being a voice for our town and the people who live, work, and love it. I want to thank you for unabashedly being true to yourself and being open-minded and unselfish. Thank you for not backing down to the obvious adult bullying that is taking place here. Thank you. I am going to respond to that because I am allowed to respond to the public when they speak a public comment. So I have a statement for this censure and I will read it now while the public is here and I will go through what it is that this council is accusing me of or whoever it was that wrote this. I don't want to say this council because I don't know who wrote this or who will vote for it. So I'm not going to go through it word by word, just the specific parts that I want to address while everybody is in this room. So there is a section here that says, whereas a member of borough council, councilperson Crowley must demonstrate and uphold the highest standards of decency, civility, integrity, and morality. I would like to ask the public, do you think I have upheld those standards? I don't think this is I am a not speaking to you. I am speaking to the public and I am responding to a comment, and it is public comment. You will not interrupt me again, Michael. Uh, you're interrupting now, the public. Whereas, Councilperson Crowley has taken the following actions and violations of her duties and obligations as borough councilor. How did any of my actions violate the oath that I swore to the Constitution? How? Of those 20 meetings, because of her late arrivals or early departures, she only attended 15. This is terrible math, because if I recall, I've been to eight meetings since December alone. The fact that members of this council refuse to accommodate any of my scheduling needs as a single mother with a disabled child is not on me. That is on the people who will not compromise. 
You say that the water committee held only two meetings during 2022. Yes, we hold committee meetings as needed. My committee is not the only meeting that held two or less. Okay. Uh, I note that you left out all of the other things that I have done for the water department and that I am the only member of the water committee who has spent hours upon hours on the phone with federal agencies learning about water legislation for our large-scale water extraction and well ordinance as well as the dam removal project and the septic. Honestly, I am a superb water chair and you pretending like I haven't done anything is not going to make it true. I have done and will continue to do an incredible job for the water and for the borough, whether or not you pull me off of my committees. Let's continue. I have not visited the water treatment plant. No, I have not. Deal with it. Of the five meetings held for Wildlands Conservancy, again, my schedule will be accommodated or it will not, and that will not be on me. As far as this social media stuff, it is my First Amendment right to post whatever I please online, barring executive session. You have no jurisdiction or legal right to tell me what I can post. In fact, the social media policy, as stated by Maureen on public record, was signed not an acknowledgement that we follow it, but only to acknowledge that we have seen it. Every other official from every county level of government in this county thinks that this is ridiculous, okay? And I'd also love for you to provide me with the receipts for some of these things. Videos where I'm putting gun symbols. Are you talking about, are you talking about TikTok dances, Greg? Am I, am I doing a TikTok dance and you don't understand social media? Without prior notification to counsel, she posted a statement on Facebook notifying the public that she had filed a complaint with the DCNR. Without prior notification, I addressed this at counsel in February 2022. I put every concern on the table and counsel chose to vote it through. I followed through and filed the report when the money was awarded. I don't have to tell you anything anyway, but I did in February. As far as documents that have been posted online, draft ordinances, we voted to give the public a copy of the draft. So if you can find anything that I've posted that is not directly from the copy that is posted on a private website, please. Otherwise, this is lies, this is misogynistic, this is bigoted. You're telling me what to do in my personal life and you're tone policing. No, no thank you. That's all I have to say. Jessica College, she is one of the few people that I get my information from. 
so that I'm informed and I find that she does her research, that, that she's extremely well informed about any of the subjects that come up here, and I'm really grateful for that. And I stand in support of her, and thank you for the time. Thank you.
and provides drinking water and is valued by so many people who this group of people serve. Why would we want to put that at risk? Keeping in mind that each person here and each person you represent has children and hopes for their grandchildren. And their children have hopes for their children and grandchildren. It's not hard to look out five or seven generations and understand our connection. Why is it that we would not want to protect something so special and beautiful that is within the realm of our protection for those people, countless numbers of people? And that doesn't even include wildlife or anything else, just specifically that. So I'd like to speak to you from the future and please, please protect this beautiful place.
I'm just going to run my business. Because my business is in this community. I'm in this community. I live in this community. I thrive in this community. I want what I am doing to be reflective of how I'm participating in politics here. So, Jessica, I apologize that this is what it took me to get this involved, but know that now I have to figure out how I'm going to get involved. So I thank you for this because as a woman-owned business, um, my voice has been stifled. I've created an amazing business, but when it comes to um, going outside those walls of my, my restaurant, it is very challenging to be heard. And unless I'm going to do all the work myself, sometimes I just said, okay, I'm just going to focus on this. So I'm really excited about what this means next for me and how I'm going to participate in this. You might not be that excited about it, but I'm excited about it. So I want to say thank you to bring me this opportunity. I'm excited, my friend. I'm excited. And she seems to dig in and um, 
and tries to understand the issues as best as she can. And I really do think that this center thing is um, ill-timed and, and not a good move at this particular juncture. Thank you. And 
I think you make more enemies than you do have friends, right? Uh, it's, it's hard when you're up there, so um, you know, you had a lot of that happens. Uh, you saw the state of the union, you're going to have to hear tonight. They hate each other. I hope this council comes together and works all together. I mean, it's, you know, I think we try to work with you as the planning commission. I think the planning commission is a really cool, uh, a really a group that wants to do right for the town. Uh, I applaud Lou for being the, uh, the chairperson there and taking care of it. And uh, last thing I'll add is uh, we appreciate council allowing uh, Secretary uh, uh, Rukas to, uh, to come on to help us in our meetings because that gives everybody the chance to uh, participate in the meeting. If, you, if one of the members tries to take minutes, he can't participate. So thank you much for all you've done. And, uh, uh, Manager Stern for uh, allowing uh, all the extra work that, that, that comes from that, so thank you. Thank you. And uh, I'd really like to see that place today, Christine. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, John. Anyone else? Anyone else in the back? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry to use my row. I'm going to take my chance. Uh, Good evening. My name is Bobby Chalier, and um, I am resident of Lee Heighton at uh, 1355 Dane Drive. I'm also the uh, Lakeview Property Owners uh, Association president, and I uh, started getting involved with the watershed. And I also, uh, at the uh, township meeting that I've been uh, uh, attending, I also met Linda, and uh, here I am as far as the state of the county. Where we get our water from is no secret. It's just a, quite a, a deal to uh, realize that we don't manufacture that. We pray for it. And if you uh, were anywhere with me at any time in my life, and you uh, lived in Southern California, and you dealt with water, you know what it meant. It's a lifeline. And anybody who thinks that they can go near it, to just even go take a chance to uh, ruin the purity and the cleanliness of the drinking water and what that means to survive in the stadium. And I just want to you know, make sure that uh, everybody understands that where our resources come from, it's very, very important to protect that natural resource. Because one day, as I can see on the third item of your minutes, it said drought. You talk about that, and then you have a couple of years with no rain. And then you talk about the reservoir of drinking whatever you have stored. You sure don't want to play with that. So I plead with you. Listen to us. You know what we say as far as our drinking water and our resources. Let us please help us stay calm County. Thank you. So we're looking at the, that bright sign like that that lights up our houses. 
with bright white light like every two or three minutes. That's just one of the, of the signs that comes up, and that one is absolutely horrendous. Um, we're aware that Mr. Presby is at last week's meeting and he made some comments too. Uh, some of the things he made comment of was that he wanted to make sure that everybody heard both sides of the story. Unfortunately, uh, some of the meetings we had were not public like this and they weren't recorded and, you know, there's like six of us and one of him and six of us remember something different. One of the things that we remember differently, he's trying to say that he told us to get from Darkening Shades when we complained about, when, well, when I complained about the sconces on the front of this building. That's <coughs> incorrect. I know that I brought the sconces up, I don't know how you call them sconces, I just said the lights on the building. He was not at the meeting in October when I first mentioned it, because when the sign went up, we said the sign was bright, and on top of that, his building lights were also bright. And we just made that as a comment, that the building lights were also bright. Well, the very next day, he had changed out the lights on the underneath of his little roof over his first floor. The very next day after this meeting, he wasn't even here. So those were changed out. That made a little bit of a difference. It wasn't as bright. And I have a picture here, too, of what it looked like before he changed his lights out. If anybody wants to see it, I'll gladly show it to you. Because you can see all the white lights underneath his little porch hang overhang and the ones on the, at the doors. So when we were at the meeting in December, when we went back in the kitchen with Mayor Franco, we were talking about all those things. And one of the things was uh, responses. He, he brought that up too because I said, you know, they are shining in the window. And he's saying that's the attempt to get rid of his shades. No, that was not me. He told us that. But he was not understanding how, how a light on a house was coming into my home. Well, unfortunately, yes, it does. It comes right into the front bedroom. And those lights were on all night long. You know, you drive up and down North Street, and I don't see everybody leaving their, their porch lights on. You know, and they, they were very bright. He claimed they were like 60 watt bulbs. Well, if I had a 60 watt bulb like that in my house, my house would be bright too. Because they, they were very bright. But when we were in the kitchen, he said he would tone those down. He said he would turn on the bottom of the sign and turn down the LED. And as we all know, and there's a front of with us on the 19th at his place of business. When we were there, we thanked him for turning down Sconce lights. We thank you for turning down the bottom of the sign, but we said the LED is still bright and flashing. And as you can see by the video, I showed you, you can go from purple, you can go to green, you can go to that bright white I showed you. It keeps cycling, and the flashing is what is causing the most problems. But we have thanked him multiple times for turning off the sconce lights. Well, he put like colored lights in there so that it isn't as bright. And it has helped to some degree. It's the sign that is still causing the problem. He says we are not willing to compromise. One of the things that I mentioned to him in the kitchen, could he put a static sign on it? And he said, no, I can't do that. Well. Over Christmas, he had a static sign on for more than 24 hours, wishing everybody Merry Christmas. And about two weeks ago, I think it was, he had a static sign for like close to 24 hours, if not 24 hours, wishing himself a happy birthday. So, I, I can't understand why he said he can't do a static sign when he can do a static sign. So, I mean, we were willing to compromise by saying, try a static sign, See if eliminating the flash might help. But, so that's where we stand. I just wanted you to know in response to a few of the things he said. You know, he told us about getting in darkening shades in his office on the 19th when we met with the mayor and the other people in my neighborhood. I asked all of them, do you remember what he said about room darkening shades? They all said it happened in his building. 
So it had nothing to do with the sponsors. It had to do with the sign. And as we said before, remarking shades are not an option. What do we do in the summer, in the spring, in the fall? When we went to open up our windows for night air, and you want to put your wine up, you don't want to have your windows open and not be able to let the air come in. What good are room darkening shades in that situation? So that's all. Okay? Thank you very much. Just run Thank you. Thank you. I have an answer to that because I asked him. 
I do. I'm um, sorry. I asked the applicant and I asked him why he didn't go for a variance instead and he said because what's the chances of him getting approved? I asked him at that very first meeting that we had, why don't we just go for a variance? Thank you. Um, so, yeah. well, I, 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 I answer, can I answer, Curtis, only the applicant can answer why he took the route he took. Uh, I really could have come to the zoning and ask for a variance. Sure he could have. Okay. Thank you. Well, I just wanted to know, because I have to follow this. Well, as you notice, I haven't been here in two years. I was here last time. I haven't been here because I'm zoning is not supposed to be here most of the time. And to get involved in this, so I really didn't want to. Let's take it. Um, Councilman Crowley, thank you. Thank you for being different. Thank you for being challenging. And all the other things you do. At the last meeting after I left, uh, at some point, I saw the mayor and I said, man, I'm so glad I don't come to meet you. And I thought to myself, and if I was sitting up here, Jessica, and a councilman, I would be saying the same thing, which is you have such talent, you have such intellect, your youth coming into the council, which we need, and try to find a little bit of better message delivery. What it could be my only advice. But at the end of the day, that's just me. You are who you are, and you should be that way. Thank you. I would seriously hope that none of you sign on paper Because it is absolutely about the first minute. And unless Jessica did something criminal, of which you should be pursuing criminal action, or civil, at which you should be pursuing civil action, the only thing left is we don't like what she's saying. There may be conduct unbecoming, which you don't like. That's fine. But all the time I've been involved with the program, which I've lived here 30 years now, and I've been coming to council meetings, zoning meetings, planning meetings, I am the president of zoning now, as you know. I've never been into a position where it looked like the group was possibly going to censure someone largely for what they write and say. Can't do that. Can't do that. Thank you. So I really respectfully ask you not to be the sign that paper to any one of you. And if there's a motion not to second. Thank you. Thank you. that we have in place at the watershed. Who benefits from the lessening of these restrictions and these protections? Why would we make a choice as a group and a public without a clearly defined benefit to said public? On a secondary note regarding the single family home development comment, just because someone may have the right to develop a property on a single family home doesn't give them the right to change the regulations to say, have a septic tank instead of a sewer system, which I believe has been discussed as part of this project, and sewer system was maybe too expensive. The public didn't come here to change the law. The, they came here to protect it. Who, where is the public support in changing this law to lessen our protections? Who is the beneficiary here? Thank you. Thank you.
them. So uh, it's been an interesting term for me. I like to sit and listen and hear the value of what comes from both sides of the table. Many times, uh, council won't get to a debate or a 3 3 tie if they know where the mayor stands because it's better to not vote than to vote and lose it. Okay? So that's why I like that. I've sat with many mayors throughout the county, many mayors throughout the state of Pennsylvania. As a matter of fact, we attend a mayor's convention in Bethel every year. Um, and the advice is always to be a strong listener and advisor. But I, I will give you an answer here tonight. Um, and, and how I feel about I, I've heard the debate, and I've heard it back and forth. Um, one thing I think it needs to be made clear to everyone is um, Mock Chun Lake, everyone keeps calling it a reservoir. Well, in the late 1800s, the early 1900s, in 1969 and 1972, there were floods that flooded out of Broadway, West Broadway. The lake was constructed to stop those floods. The water intake for the east to west side of the town is in Machon Creek. Jay Miller was here and he confirmed that. That is where the water intake is, which is somewhere in the area of um, Sportsman Club in the lake. How I know that was all done in the dedication is because there was one motorboat that aside of the fishing game fish and took the game flood around the lake. And I was uh, there in 1972 at that age. Watching my grandfather load his boat into the lake. And he took Danny's blood and Danny's cart and the rest of the contingency around the lake to show him what accomplishment they achieved. So I do have a strong tie because of memories of my grandfather showing me the pictures from his camera when he came back two weeks later and like today when we were fighting in two minutes, two seconds, I should say. So I would say this to all of you. I've had many sit-down conversations with Commissioner Nostein. Many times I've sat with him and had this discussion. It should be noted that um, with those discussions, it came up about the purchasing of the property. Uh, I know there's been many discussions at the county commissioner's office. I do not support the taking of anyone's land by eminent domain or just condemning it. I feel that it is an overstretched and overarm of government. It's your land. However, I do support the purchasing of it. I do think that the county, Carbon County, Borough, and all those who are involved should work diligently to purchase not only this piece of land, but all the land that goes around the Lake to preserve that as a pristine area. If you go back and you look into the minutes, you will see where uh, I debated about the cutting of the trees down on Flagstaff, which is a shame. Which is a shame. It should not have However, it should be noted that the law allows you to clear your land. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with the development of that type. I think development needs to be done and it needs to be managed. As far as should the zoning be changed, my answer is no. Leave the zoning to stay the way it is. <laughs> However, what does need to happen is our zoning board, as John McGuire had said, our planning commission needs to get together and address it. Because even if that piece of land is purchased, that doesn't stop the next piece of land, and the next piece of land, and the next piece. And it doesn't just happen in Jim Thorpe, it happens out of Bellsville, it happens in throughout this entire county. So I think that the answer here tonight is I do not support changing zoning that has been tried and, and, and through because I think that natural beauty that this county offers should not be put aside of anything. However, I do think that council, in defense of council here, they are doing their due diligence. I know you might not always agree with all of them as many times I don't, but they're just trying to go through a lot of checks and balances, and I've watched that. The fear is always, you know, can you be sued for not allowing someone to use the land the way they wish? Can you, um, has everyone been checked and, and, and rechecked and re-asked? And their concern is if they stay with the septic the way it is now, will there be more development out there if they put a sore line out there? So, so there's a lot on their plate. I can tell you that I, Say keep it the way it is. I'm sure some council members may disagree or agree with that. But I can tell you this, the only way we're gonna solve any of it is if we leave zoning and planning in Jim Thorpe handle it through the county and set up the regulations we need to move us forward into the future so that we can keep this. So I hope that gives you some of the dreams of what I'm looking for. I'm not trying to play politics here. I'm, I'm truly, I'm not. 
I'm just trying to tell you what I've heard. Uh, and I do know from meeting many, many times with Commissioner Nobstein, and I support that. If he could negotiate that sale, and they can get that sale from Kennedy, that doesn't solve all the problems, but it solves a big piece. It also helps borough council here, too, to make those decisions. But in the meantime, I would be in favor of not changing any of this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
2112 Broadview Drive short term rental permit application appeal hearing has been continued, was continued by the zoning hearing board, therefore pushed the, uh, the public hearing in front of our council, uh, delayed that so that is uh, continued until April 13th, 2023. For banning, yes, okay. All in favor, aye, aye, aye. opposed. Motion carries. Is there a motion to approve salvo waiver 39013 FP regarding lot lines following municipal boundaries? Motion, second. Questions, all in favor, aye, aye, aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Is there a motion to accept the grant of an extension of time for the borough to consider this plan until May 23rd, 2023? Motion. Second. Questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next up is the Canyon Brim Estates Residential Agro-Tourism Rustic Camping Preliminary Subdivision Plans dated November 18th, 2022. There's also a time extension waiver uh, there as well. Uh, is there a motion to grant that extension waiver to March 10, 2023? Do you want to entertain that at this point in time? Council like to entertain that or do we want to hear from Mr. Arner and Mr. Erdman first? For doing so? Okay. Oh. Okay. All right, Mr. Arner. Yes, hi, uh, welcome to everyone. My name is Jay Arner. Um, I'm a developer. My goal in life is to share my property with people. Uh, the way I share my property is by creating Google Trails. Is 
started in 1973, and a member of the family looks at every review that comes through from a customer. We have repeat buyers. We, we hope that you will support Mr. Arner's project because we believe that there is a market in this area to, to build homes for families that would really like to take advantage of this area. If you have any questions, we have to answer questions, but that's too much for that one to share with May I? Yes. Thank you very much. I do have one question, please. So as a partner, for lack of a better term, in, in the Arner uh, project, does that mean that you'll be creating new preliminary plans, or will you be utilizing the existing ones that have been presented to us? If, if we're successful in working something out with Mr. Arner and if this project goes forward, we, are, we will not be submitting plans for development. We will, be, we, we will see house plans as, as we submit um, to build homes. But we're looking, we're looking at the project the way we've seen it, the way you've seen it, as it is currently. Um, the lot sizes are, are what we're seeing throughout all three of our regions, and, and it works for us. So no, the answer to the question is no, we will not be bringing back other plans. We would, we would have um, some sort of a business agreement or we would either be buying uh, finish lots or um, some sort of a, a, a partnership as far as doing improvements. And, and we haven't worked out the details yet. So we need to just to be clear, we, we do not have uh, an agreement at this time right. because we need, you know, we need some more um, details as far as approvals in order to go forward. So you'll be, at this point in time, you'll be, you, uh, if we were submitted plans, it's going to be the, what we've seen previously, phase one and two. Is that correct? Um, that, that's what you're proposing, being a partner? That's what you're proposing, being a partner in the program with, phase one and two, that we've already seen. Is that correct? No, the all five phases. I'm sorry? There are five phases. Okay. So it would, it would be the, yeah, you would like to be a part of the end all right, all right. I've seen we, we've seen the phases that start I think 2029 and then culminate approximately 46 is it that's correct okay very good all right so okay but basically what you're talking about doing is basically being the construction arm of this project uh, the development arm that, that, that's okay. I'm just trying to make sure I'm clear on it and on our, our website is Berkson, B -R -K -S -H -O -M -E -S com. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Good evening. Phil Arger, Peace Company, Consulting Engineers, and I'd like to give you a very simple answer to your question. Yes, we intend to proceed with the plans you're receiving on this testimony. As to whether they're involved in all four by phases, but at this point, there isn't, there isn't an intent to have a partnership with the project for him being a moment. So, I'd like to do a quick overview to bring the council up to where we are. Um, as you may be aware, we attended the planning commission meeting on January 17th. The planning commission recommended conditional approval of the plan, that's the preliminary plan, recommended conditional approval of the preliminary plan, conditioned upon addressing both the borough engineer's comments as well as the Carbon County Planning Commission comments, both documents being made in 1220. So that was a recommendation to move it forward. That recommendation is set forth in a letter from Brooke to the council who was dated January 18th. Um, as you all know, we attended the last workshop meeting, and uh, I can say that coming out of that meeting, from my perspective, there were basically two issues to address. The first one was a number of comments and questions, and not concerns per se, but to get a better understanding of how we were going to address the comments in both the engineer's letter as well as the county letter. We should have received the extensive packet of information from a lot of exhibits, which explains how we're going to address them. So that was really provided to give the council a better understanding of how we're going to address those comments, because at that point, all you have is your own comments. So hopefully, you don't have any questions on those, but hopefully you've seen that packet and it adequately at least addresses your questions or concerns as to how we're going to address those comments. The 
second thing that came out of the which was the issue of whether or not the uh, stipulation of the settlement agreement governed this plan. And it's my understanding, Mr. Kraus is here, Jim is here, that they had exchanges through email and so forth. And um, your solicitor has determined that it is governed by that original stipulation of settlement agreement as to that. So in very simple terms, based on the recommendation from your planning commission, we understand that we have to address all the conditions as far as the final, as far as the preliminary plan approval. We're asking for council's approval of the plan with the same conditions that were applied by the planning commission. So I have any questions. I'm trying to keep it brief. I know you have a long meeting, so are you long? You have a long meeting, so I'm trying to do a quick overview of this. If you have any questions, I'm certainly willing to address them. I have some questions. So to be clear, if council were to make a motion to grant conditional approval to this preliminary plan, and the conditions included complying with the county planning commission comments of December 20, those are acceptable. Yes, they are. The borough engineers' comments of December 20, that's acceptable. Yes, they are. Okay. And you're saying that the 2005 agreement would be applicable. That you're, that's what you want as part of this as well. That's, that's correct. correct. And I think with the last plan, with the exception of the roads, were not going to be turned over to the municipality. Is that? That's exactly, exactly right. That was part of the discussion earlier on, and they were made private and be made made known by owners' association. Okay. And I know these are preliminary plans, but then my only other, but they like a phase extension. We'll get to that. Um, and council may love this. They may, I don't know. Um, but I guess the other question is, is, and I don't remember this, what, how are you addressing sewer and water? I know previously we talked about central sewer and water, which was going to, I thought it was going to be supplied by the developer independently of the borough sewer and water. Has that been determined yet, how you're going to supply sewer and water to this development? Let me answer that question, that might be a question for the council members too, in terms of what was proposed. As it relates to the water, it will be an on-site water system, obviously getting all the necessary need to be approval with tanks and wells and pumps and so forth, the formation system. So it will be an on-site water system providing water for the entire project. As it relates to the sewer. So, just, so it's a central water system, but it's on-site. It's a private on-site water system. Private on-site water system. Again, as I said about the roads, this would be owned and maintained by owner association. As it relates to the sewer, and there are really two answers to that. As it relates to the buildings, they will be connected to a low pressure system that will discharge down into the borough treatment plant. As it relates to the campsites, those will be um, served by um, porta potties. There is a possibility down the road, and I think some of you can quite frankly, is there is a field shown on there that's a septic field on the plant. I think that creates some confusion. At some point down the road, there might be a changeover to have a somewhat centralized low pressure system for the campsites, which would then go down that facility. But the houses themselves, the buildings, are going to be to a low pressure system going down over the, down over the hill to the plant. Now, is the, is the, I know you're saying so, the sewer would be connected to a low pressure system, which would eventually connect to the borough system. That is correct. Right. Okay. And is that in these preliminary plans, or is that just, just something that you're contemplating and you put them in the final plans? Um, it's not in the preliminary plans because it's not required to answer the question. It would have to be in the final plans because you're not going to put the plans in the center of storage. So that would have to be done on the final plans. And if you weren't aware of it, we've already had a preliminary meeting with, uh, it wasn't Gary, it was a gentleman in his office as well as the the Alina Public Works to have a very preliminary discussion about that option to provide sources. But that would have to be part of the plan, so no question about it. I don't know if you, I know there has been some discussions, I understand that, I didn't know if there had been any decisions made, and that was my concern. I don't want, if there's been no determinations, I don't want this approval binding on accepting a central sewer. That's all I'm saying. Right. Yeah, I mean, from our standpoint, we're going to go forward with a central sewer. We can discuss the available capacity, we can actually discuss the line that goes across the river to the plant, and there's a general feeling that there's more enough capacity that that's what we're going through. So, so there's definitely going to be central sewer discharging to the borough plant for the bills. No question about that. That's the intent. 
said definitely. I don't think he's saying that they're applied to it. Do you have any comment on the sewer part of it? Yeah, I, uh, I had uh, some comments, just it wasn't clear on, on the preliminary plans what was proposed, so I appreciate that uh, explanation. And, and I know there's a number of questions uh, that the borough sewer uh, department has still on, on that, so that, you know, it's, it's, it's still kind of in a conceptual stage as far as the sanitary sewer, but we did want to know the intention. Um, so that's uh, that's good to know. I guess a concern would be if the borough cannot accept the sewage for some reason, uh, engineering reason, you know, <coughs> what would be the fallback? Well, in terms of, in terms of the engineering, um, I'm not quite sure we can work through that because I know one of the concerns up front was the slope of that line coming down the hill. And we had, I had a fairly long conversation with Elon, and the gentleman said, this is not, we've done this in many locations where we've had discharges that are down the side of fairly steep slopes. The one thing that, that strikes me that could occur, although this one doesn't be a problem, is if there was a capacity plant. But, so we have to look at those alternatives, but I don't anticipate that we would do on-site sewage disposal for the numerous number of units. For campsites is one thing. If you bring those into a central system, it gets much, much larger. So we have to work with those issues. But other than an elimination of capacity in the plant, which I don't think it is now, I'm not anticipating any problems with that detailed design. Is it, is it going to be detailed? A lot of work to be done. You know, that will be detailed, yes. But I'm not anticipating any problem with that. I'm, I'm just throwing it out there as a, a possibility. I, I know I saw a list of concerns, um, odors, and, and you know other things mm -hmm. that hopefully uh, you can overcome. But if for some reason you cannot, um, would that affect the layout of your lots? If you would have to put everything on your property, served with its central sanitary sewer. Would that be possible with this dense city of uh, lot layouts? It is possible that it could be less dense. Uh, the 84 lot uh, kind of would be one option in that regard. Again, the intent is to be more of part of the odor issue. Did you mention that? We already discussed that with E1, and again, they said they don't see a problem with that. It has to be part of the design, the way to deal with it. We need to get into those details at this point. But they were not concerned about any odor issues, which, which obviously we'd be concerned about too. We don't want to have that in the well, I attended that meeting, and the leader had as well, and I didn't come away with the same interpretation you had, that this is going to be an easy and efficient um, installation of the sewer line. There was a lot of questions, I believe you asked a lot of them. I, I don't know, I didn't get the same impression, so. Yeah, I wouldn't say easy. If I did, I apologize. What I'm saying is we have to work with the And I understand. I may not be able to do that, but I wouldn't say it's easy. I understand working through it. I think there was a roadblock at the bottom that uh, you can drill the line down. Do we have to get across uh, public property to get to the sewer line? And that, that was another roadblock. And we have wherever he comes down to the bottom. Right. Isn't there a big issue that we have to get across there to connect into the line? We didn't, we, we didn't have a good solution for that. That's not a question. And I apologize. I'm not the sewer engineer. I'm not talking to handles most of that. Uh, I just know from what I've looked at, I guess the proposed connection is down at Susquehanna Street right, right. before it goes across to the plant. Um, but I did see, you know, from the various meetings, I saw some notes and, and there were concerns expressed uh, by the, the borough. And I just want to make sure, for, my concern is that if those obstacles can't be overcome and you have to go back to a central sewer system, does that affect the plans we're going to approve or look the conditionally approved? It's possible, but in terms of the route to get to the plant, ideally it's how we do all private property and we require the necessary easements, which would all be dedicated to the borough. But the fallback is to go on and have our right way. And the biggest concern I had, quite frankly, going into that workshop meeting we had here that we must meet was whether or not there was sufficient capacity in the plant and sufficient capacity in the line across the river. And the answer was yes. Okay, 
so good. Yeah. Might be a problem down the road, you know, years from now, right now it's not a problem. Right, so again, I think the, one of the issues is the variability of your, your plan. At one point we're talking about 270, but if the sewer line, the low pressure line doesn't work, I think you just said you're going to revert back to the 84 lot plan. Is, uh, um, I'm sorry, his name, Gary, uh, are they on board if it goes from 270 back to 84? I don't know the question to ask, but that is not the question. We're not anticipating that to be the case. Right. Um, uh, so, um, uh, our, our interest is located in the borough sewer plant. Um, we've had long discussions with E1, and we, we actually got a preliminary plan from E1, uh, and they said hydraulically, from an engineering standpoint, it would work. When, when we spoke with you, um, we were told that the plant was at 48% capacity. Now, the amount of resistance that we're putting there in, in retrospect, is 10% of what we can work this. In comparatively, you know, it's about 10%. So I, I don't see a 50% capacity that there's any capacity issues. It's just logical that there will be enough. Um, I don't think that there's any issue with the fact that it goes across the river um, because that was discussed as well. So, um, you know, we think that we're here to discuss the plan that's in front of you. Um, if we don't get those approvals from those agencies, which would be DEP, and of course, if you're a sewer engineer, then this plan doesn't work or we have to come back to you in an alternative way. Our, our, no way are we putting any sewage on the Jim Thorpe side of the mountain. Okay, no way. You know, anything that, that we would do on the project would be more than a half mile away from Mock Country Watershed or, or Mock Country or anywhere else. Guaranteed. Not, not even going there. So, you know, I respect your interest in clean water. We're going to comply. The best way to do that is to look up your plan. And that's what we're willing to do at our cost. So, we have a, a plan in front of you. Uh, we told you that we want to do a medical sewer system that goes to the line. We're asking for your additional approval so that we can prove to you that the NADEP and, and your engineer that it works. But without your additional approval, we can't do that because it costs a lot of money to do it. It takes a lot of time and a lot of money. I am meeting with a hydrogeologist on the way from Keystone Engineering. And we, we looked at wells, and in regard to just this concern about water, we are developing a wonderful plan. And he sees absolutely no issue why we can't have wells there that can serve as a water facility. He says it'll pretty much be a non issue. And there's a lot of water in the sandy hot soils that exist up there that is basically where that's work, which is what I said before, and that there won't be water issue. So, um, if you grant us conditional approval tonight, we will be able to satisfy, satisfy those conditions and go forward. Uh, borough Council is at no risk. If we can't satisfy those conditions, the plan's over. You know, the, 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 this plan, if we can't meet it, well, we don't meet the condition. And your solicitor can help that. My concern, and I'm saying this to you, Jake, with your attorney there, but my concern is that you don't walk away with this, that there's some guarantee that you will have connection to the borough sewage treatment plant. You may, that may be your intent, but I don't want any approval, if there is any tonight, of the preliminary plans to be taken by you or your engineer that we're guaranteeing connection to the sewer plant. And I'm I fine, I understand. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have a question for the solicitor quick. So, uh, one of the things that they're citing in here is that the, uh, let's say we disagree with the, uh, the binding agreement. It, said, it says in one of the paragraphs, the protection period for Canyon Rim shall extend to June 30th, 2015. And I'm not sure what you're reading, and I just, I just want you to understand that I don't mean to cut you off, but I also want to save a lot of time for you. The other plans that we were here about previously, that's not what's in front of you. 
The only thing that's in front of you is the, the, the plan that was submitted and stated in November 18, 2022, and what in front of the plan I think it was January 17. I understand that. Okay. Okay, so I have a question on that because what you cited, what was cited in the responses was that the stipulation settlement agreement was extended to cover that. You used that, not you personally, but that's been used as an argument in what we were provided. And the one that was signed on the 12th day of March, 2009, has in the paperwork, this shall extend to June 30th, 2015. So I'm asking, was it extended again somehow with another document? It was not extended again with another document. However, we have when we approved the prior plan, I think it was, I don't remember which one it was, we again said it will be subject to this 2005 agreement. So I think the question really isn't whether or not the 2005 is extended. The question I think might come in in the phasing of this is to how many phases there will be and what extension there will be that will be protected by the current zone ordinance. So no, there has been no other agreement other than those two which extended it to some future date. I mean, I know that doesn't completely answer your question, but it answers your immediate question, which is no, there was no other document. Okay, so that allows them the leeway to say that we can make changes within certain parameters to what we're submitting. Because that's what the inside is. Changes to what? In the document, they use the argument that maybe it would be modified within the limits. Right, and that's why when they're submitting a new plan, that's the modification within the limits of it. That is, that's why I'm saying it's subject to it, because in that agreement, we gave the developer latitude to develop within certain limits. Right, but these plans wouldn't change. They would have to do new plans. These plans would not change. They're explaining why the density increased. Yeah, that's right. These are new plans. We believe that this, I believe, that this agreement still applies. This 2005 agreement still applies to these new plans, but they are new plans. Right. And then the phasing schedule is, I hate to say it this way, but it's a different issue. Yeah. So you should look at that and say to yourself, do you like that phasing schedule? And if not, why not? And then have a discussion with my client about it. Well, if you're asking me, it does seem somewhat that it's going to 2049. That's a long time. Well, that's because you have basically five phases at the end of the day. Now, I can't speak as to how the construction timetable will go. That's not what I do. Obviously, we have Mr. Arner here. We have Engineer Urban here. We have the gentleman from Burks Homes. I'm not sure which one to discuss the phasing schedule. But frankly, that is a typical type of phasing schedule that I see in my practice. You're looking at 2023 right now, correct? Okay. We're looking at additional approval. The updated emphasis permit, the NPDES permit, will take some time, quite some time, frankly. So those dates are really right around the corner in the life cycle of this type of development. But I defer to anybody on that. If you'll recall at the workshop meeting, we had a pretty amazing schedule. And I know council had a real concern because that went out even further, quite a few years. And in the discussion, I'm not going to have the whole council fill it, but at one point there was a comment to the effect that 25 years is probably reasonable, something to consider. Because that was the question I posed. If this phasing schedule is acceptable, which phasing schedule would be? And I think somewhere in the discussion it was like something more along the lines of 25 years. And we tried to back into that with the schedule that's now on the plan. Or excuse me, proposed to be put on the plan. So it came out of that discussion at the workshop meeting. And again, it was mentioned at that meeting, you could go back to that. You can't predict the housing market. It could slow down in the future. And who knows what the hell's in the valley for the many years of the housing market. But I can tell you from a development standpoint, if they can move it faster than that, they will definitely move it faster than that. But we're trying to be conservative to try to recognize any of the things down the road. But again, we tried to back into that 25-year time frame that was mentioned at that last meeting as a guide to the back of the line schedule.
the parking lot question. I know it's the 200, was it the 200, it's listed what was the purpose of it. At one point it called it the tram parking, but then somewhere else in the document it says it's for um, agritourism. What, what is the purpose? Sure. So, so it's um, not for tram parking. Uh, the purpose of the 220 mile parking lot on there is for agritourism purposes. So think of 149 campsites, and, and people want to park their cars at the facility that they come to. Now, why would they do that? Our goal is to transport people to the gym floor in vans so that we cut down on traffic congestion and traffic. That's our goal. So when people want to go get onto a bus or a tram or a, a, a van, um, they need a place to assemble. Because you're not going to drive the van to the campsites to pick up people. They have to come to a, a central location. So, so that's the reason for it. We expect that the agritourism with the academy is going to grow. We expect to have a bigger winery. We expect to have more agritourism activities, more classes. And I've been speaking to Rodale Institute, who's very interested in this, but they tell me, look, you know, we need 100 people there to put on a class because you won't be able to afford it otherwise. And, and that's, that's just the dynamics of it. So, Let's think about 100 people coming to a class. Well, it takes cars to do that. So that's our goal. Um, now, if the borough council in the future would like us to provide parking with a tram on the bikes of that property, we're very interested in helping in any way that we can. But you know, I told you before, the tram has to decide that's going to happen. And, and you have to decide that you want that. If the borough wants to do the parking, do the parking itself. I don't care. I, I, I just want a happy neighborhood. I don't want people parking on the streets. That's, that's what I want. So, let me try some questions. Okay. okay. Uh, what, another question. Did the, F, did the FCO approve this plan? That's not required. Yeah, not, not required. It's not a requirement. Not with the. With the I thought that was referencing it somewhere it was brought up that there was going to be more uh, portal lights. It was approved previously, but now. Okay. But in your letter, 
that you just sent dated February 3rd. You mentioned that during the 2019 plan approval, the proposed roads were taken out for dedication, but then you say that you an offer to accept dedication has been added to this plan. And again, an offer to accept dedication should include a signature block for the borough to accept the road rights of way. Is that only for the rights of way? No, let me explain that. Um, and this is council's decision, but what is, what is being offered is the additional right of way along the front of the Blackstaff Road. If in fact council wants that, that that's, that's why it's there. So the rights of way slash roads for the internal project road would not be dedicated, but if council chooses to accept the right of way along um, Blackstaff Road, and I, I've seen it both ways. Some of these values will say, to show on the plan because it's the primary there for the setbacks for the development of lots. And in some cases, the municipalities will say dedicated to those, so we have that right of way if we want to improve this along the road in the future. But that is just along the Flagstaff Road for the lots front of Flagstaff Road. Maureen, that's why that's still in the, in the discussion. Maureen, can I ask you a question? Which roads were you talking about for the right of way? Were you talking the roads in the actual property or? She was asking for clarification and it was given it, to her. It just says the streets in the proposed subdivision. Okay. So that wouldn't be Flagstaff Road, correct? It would be an additional right away along Flagstaff Road. Like, like for example, example Flagstaff Road has an existing 40 foot right away in the ordinance prior 60 feet. And along the frontage there would be an additional 10 feet of right away to meet the ultimate right away requirements for the ordinance. Okay, you're losing me on that because you keep saying on Flagstaff Road. Only, only on Flagstaff. Only on Flagstaff? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So there's no other streets in the proposed subdivision? No, it says in there, it should, I have to look at it to, to understand for sure, but the intent is not to dedicate anything on the internal roads because as you indicated, you don't want it. So if you're not going to set the roads, you won't get a right away either. But if you write away the right way along is in the flat track. Okay, you may want to double check. I'll double check. That's the answer to that. Whatever it says there, I can change that. But that's definitely the intent. The sewage for the campsites, you answered, I had the same question. When you're mentioning the campsites, uh, how many camps are you talking about? How many campsites? Because I think we only gave you, um, what was it for, to put up, what was, how many was that one? That was only six. This was is, I believe, 149? So on this plan, there's 149. On your new proposed ordinance, it asks, or, or permits one and a half campsites per acre. Uh, we're at half that volume. Well, what, okay. what the new proposed ordinance are you talking about? Well, you don't have any standards in your new ordinance, so I, I, I can't I can quote that. You just said new proposed ordinance, didn't you? Your, your salvo, your proposed, I'm sorry, your proposed zoning ordinance. Okay. That's where I'm You're doing it. all this, so you're covered under our current ordinance, right? Well, I'm trying to answer your question. Yeah. The, the current ordinances are what apply to Okay. It's also permissible under the current ordinance. Okay. What, what is, what do you mean? I do have another question on the zoning ordinance review and it is regard, in regards to the 100 foot setback requirement for the camping sites. And I can see perhaps. Do you want to just flag the paragraph number? This is in, in your February 3rd letter, the case C February 3rd letter, zoning ordinance review number one. The rustic campsites, some of them are within the 100 foot setback requirement for all properties. For the zoning ordinance, section, section two, two, paragraph one. one. Use some more, a different paragraph. Or you'd like to brought that up. Carrie and I talked about how we found the movement. Yeah. 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 Ye
site plan would be when you're talking about to clearly identify and have sites. Or do you know what the final plan is? Yeah, I guess you could address it on the, on the final plan as well if you don't want to do a second okay. one. So, for example, if, if it does develop a phase of spread conflict, the campsites in, in that phase, whichever phase is going to be reported in the final, the details necessary will be provided and now we're going to carry forward as far as the land development approval of campsites in conjunction with reporting the approval of that phase. Yeah, I think it depends on what's going on. How hard would it be to actually provide the final? preliminary plan, the final and correct preliminary plan of all this. I know correct. you try to get these all taken care of comments, but how hard would it be to provide a plan that you could sit and look at that has all this stuff on it and right. it's, it's ready to go? Well, exactly, that's not required at this stage. Okay, this is preliminary approval. Okay, there's other details that you provide at the final plan approval. It's very commonplace to get a preliminary plan approval. It's actually Required unless you get a waiver to do preliminary slash final at the same time, which you haven't asked for. I'm not asking for the final plan. I said to put, he had a, last week we had a preliminary plan on the table with an overlay. It was difficult to look at because you had to adjust this to try to, I'm asking about that preliminary plan. How hard would it be to have, I, I misused the term. I meant the, the preliminary plan. The correct, that's not, I'm not asking for the final plan. Oh, you're, you're asking, asking for revised. The actual factual preliminary right. plan. The current, the current one. Everything, the correct current one. one. Yes. yes. That we could actually see what you really are yeah. going to show us what you're going to do. Well, these plans do show you what we're going to do. Nothing is being proposed to be changed. And the campsite details or minor details that can be put up on the final plan, not the preliminary plan, are not required at this point in time. So I'm not understanding really what you're looking for. I think, yeah, I, I think there are a number, of, and Bill indicated in his responses, there are a number of, uh, what we would say, cosmetic type changes, additions, corrections, notes. I think that's what the council would like to see, a plan that has those that are attracted. In his letters, it's already stated that they've been revised. Uh, I think the council would like to see those plans that have those corrections made. I, I think we're not asking for final plan details, just the corrections uh, the water, of the, the items. What would make with, it Yeah, easy. with the water, the store. What you plan on doing with that? Is well, if, well, you're saying if it Mrs. doesn't Mrs. work. Mrs. Clitch, Mrs. Clitch, that's not required at this point in time. That's why I don't we, we, hear, we know what you're saying. Okay. It's not required. But, but you, still, you still don't know if you're going to be connecting to the store, not connecting to the store, or coming up with your own... Um, you know, water supply and your own uh, sewer system. So we don't know that yet. Right, but at the preliminary, at the preliminary so plan, the right, I not know it's not required. required. And, then they and then the plans are at risk if they're not able to, um, you know, get what they need to get relative to the sewer. If that's the direction they're going. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let me pick up on the discussion since Jamie went to the last meeting. You remember that issue I was thinking of the last meeting. And my comment was, <clears throat> it's very difficult, in fact, I've rarely never seen it any other way, you get preliminary approval, you don't require a preliminary plan, and then you move to the plan, in this case, it may be in phases. So, if we revise the plan, if you've got the eyes and processes that we carry characterized, we can do that, but the concern is then, does that start the process over, because you would be approving a different plan than the plan which is recommended, and I'm just concerned that that starts a process over again. If Carrie would like to see the revised plan off the record and say, yes, council, by the way, I've got a set of plans and all the changes have been made on So, okay, well, my what I would say to that is maybe it would be a different story if this was the first plan to come here with, but we're four phases in, four, I think it's four, this is the fourth plan. So it is confusing to keep track. And you guys, and I say in general, keep referring to what was approved. Stuff from the 84 flows over into the 270, flows over into the one that's being proposed today. It's confusing for us to understand exactly what's being done. And, and to try to look at a plan that's on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, it's hard to see. So, and, and that, that's Michael, my that's my question, question, is that if I could, if I could view the current one sheet, the current plan, 
would, would be, I mean, is that a challenge? It'd be, I think that would be easier for, for us as a council because I, I gotta tell you, what you're hearing here is that we're kind of confused by what the actual current plan, I won't say final, but the current plan. We're surprised because additional copies are supplied to the borough for distribution to you. But even last week we had overlays So, well, this is kind of it and this is kind of it and there's a minor change here. I'm not confused, by the way. What's that? I'm not confused, by the way. Great. I'm just going to put that out there. The plan didn't change. Sorry. The overlay plan was to show you that the road didn't change, that there was no significant difference. And that was because the Department of Planning Commission said there were differences, and there were no differences. You can overlay one right on top of the other, there's no difference. And, and so it was to demonstrate that. However, everything on the plan that you have in front of you will not change. That's, that's the preliminary plan. The only thing that it will do is comply with your engineer's request, the conditions. And we received the planning commission recommendation that if we comply with the conditions, that we'll get the preliminary plan approval, and that's why we're here tonight. And as far as the sewer question, just to clarify once more, we are definitely connecting to the central plan, sewer treatment plan of the borough for purposes of the buildings. No question about that. One of the challenges, yes. The risk is ours, we have to work through them. But I think we we have done, at least with personal that we have done enough preliminary investigation to say there don't appear to be any obstacles to it. Either the construction of the low pressure force main, and or the capacity of the plant, and or the capacity of the pipe across the river. We had that meeting intentionally because I wanted to make sure before the plan went forward that there weren't any major roadblocks in the way. And at this point in time, you're not. Jim's commented earlier, if we come in 10 years from now and have capacity in the plan, I've seen many projects down in the area I work in the valley where that happens. There's no more sewer capacity. You know what you do? You can't proceed. If your plan is still valid, you can't proceed. But we're certainly hoping that's not going to happen, and given the fact that there's a significant amount of remaining capacity in the plan, we're not anticipating that we're going to run into that problem. Yeah. Your, your letter indicates that you have made a few changes on the plans for that. Yeah. So, we, kind of have, we kind of have a cart before the horse. I, I, I'm just, I don't understand if council is asking for a revised, updated preliminary plan that you have not made any changes on. Why is it so difficult to run one off if you've already addressed these items on it? I can do that. I just want to make sure that that doesn't complicate the conditional approval we already have. That's my concern. You don't have it yet. All you have is a recommendation from the planning commission for that. The council has made that decision. It's very difficult to understand. In order to make the decision for you, that's why we're asking for the revised plan to assist that. Changing the plan, submitting the plan is no problem. Those are minor issues. And the reason that I don't thought it was fake is we, we opted to provide the explanation letter I did not want to resubmit it by the time to the work done to create confusion. Because there's going to be religion on there. And then you're planning to share. Is there confusion? Maybe it will help you eliminate confusion. But how do we do that without affecting the conditional recommendations now for the council? That's the big experiment. It's the way these things occur. We have to back the planning commission and the planning commission now. I, I, think we, I think we answered that question. We, we answered that question on how do you provide, how do you provide clarity. If, I'm, I'm confused. Joanne's confused. Jessica's not. Michael is. We're, we're, so if I, I can speak for myself. If I could look at one plan, one set of plans, the current preliminary plan, uh, then, then if, from there, maybe we can make a, a positive decision. But if we're confused at this stage, please help us become clear. Those plans you've already seen have not changed for purposes. But Jake says, they, Jake comes up and says, well, they haven't changed except for A, B, and C. But we did that last week, I thought, with the overlay. 
Yeah, that was the. Yeah, that was. So what? But this has changed. What am I missing? I, nothing. It was like the house lines were a little different, but none of the roads were different. Like the map was like pretty much exactly on top of its, each other. There wasn't any additional. These changes, like so many of the Democrats, since 2005, that's why I'm saying, why can't he show us? Like, so the extension goes beyond the next count. Okay. Well, but they haven't they have accepted that yet. That's correct. Right. Yeah. And if they don't accept it, they have to make their decisions now. Before, before the next meeting, so yeah. Before the next meeting. <laughs> So can we get a corrected preliminary plan? We'll give the time extension. Can that give you time to correct the plan? That seems what the council is looking for. And then let me ask you next, so then Kerry would review that plan and issue another letter because there's gonna be items that are gonna come out of this letter. So I'm just, I don't wanna make it difficult. I'm trying to think of the procedural process. If we submit another plan, got the eyes and brush the team, right? then we would carry issue another letter with additional comments, and then that letter would be the condition, the conditional letter of approval. So if we have to back the plan. No, no, you have to go back to the plan. Well, I'm just saying. The planning commission recommendation clearly says what it says. Approval of not a
the message crystal clear. And we are acknowledging in the minutes. I'm very clear because I have to check with the engineers of the firm. But I just want that understood and in the minutes and reported that I want to make that we have to make I have to make a determination and that is my concern. And I respect that except for the fact that you need to consider please that's not a legal requirement for what's in front of you. And I want that in the minutes. <laughs> Mr. President, it's, it's clear either you got to do things. Either you give them a time extension or you give them a yes or no. Apparently, they don't want a time extension. Call it. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> I gave you a time extension. I didn't, I didn't say you didn't deserve a time extension. I said you, they got to make a decision. We could go on here till midnight. The right. bottom line is it's either a time extension and work it out or give them a yes or no. Give the man an answer. One second. Well, <laughs> So yes or no, or a time extension, right? Yeah, right. Well, we're we're just just have a to confirm that, and frankly, uh, you know, pushing the issue. Well, you're pushing the issue, and I'm sitting here with just two guys, two guys, and council talk. I don't think you know what's going on here. So let's please either give an extension, to research the ministry, or ask, or make a motion to get to the The answer is coming for you and council. Yes. We'll revise and resubmit the plan where comments can be addressed. I don't think you have to understand. Many of the comments are just going to be nothing different than the final plan that we have here in our grade. So you will come in and resubmit. Resubmit Thank addressing you. the items that need to be addressed, and then we'll figure out the procedure after that. So we'll see Thank you, Mr. Now, just to be clear, let's don't we, push it. We have the planning commission's recommendation for the condition. He's going to address the conditions on the plan for your engineer to review for a council to make a decision. That's that's what we're saying. I, I don't see I don't think you're going to push it. Kind of, I understand. You need an answer, yes or no? The motion would be to grant uh, to accept the grant of the extension of the time for the borough to consider this plan until March. 2023. Motion. Okay. I'll second the motion. Uh, Mr. Gay steady. Mr. Miller on second. Further any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. 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 I guess the question I have is, Carrie, by when do you need to be in terms of your time to do that? Uh, that's that's why did you call the work can, we, can, can we get a few copies of the plan? So we'll yeah, we did have today. large ones. No one came to pick them up, so. We said eight copies of Thank you. Yeah, we'll let you know when we get the large ones in. Yeah, of course, Thank you. Carrie. I'm going to get a lot of time. Okay. Something you've said and did. And I want you to be sure. That's what I'm saying. You can ask for it. Part of everything. 
okay, that is very damaging. I want you to have yeah, that. I, know. That's 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 I, I understand that. I want to make sure they understand. We're okay. I got it. Thank we're, you. We're good, but we're, you know, I just want to know what capacity we have. I understand the capacity. All of the costs. Yeah, there's four costs. I will go over. Thank you. I will say whatever I want. No, 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 no. But it's a lie. It's a lie. It's not a lie. It's a lie. You can prove that it's a lie. I will say what I want. Thank you. I will say what I want. You should suicide before you judge people. Why don't you talk to me privately instead of trying to come at me on public record, Joanne? All right. Thank you. She wanted to start it here, not me. You have my phone number. You can call me. You want to act like a child? You can go ahead and act like a child. Thank you so much oh. for your support. Yeah, I do my best. And I think you came out stunningly good tonight, but I want to leave right now. Unless I got a babysitter at 9.30 uh, every night. Yeah, I tell them. That's why they wait to these things to do it last for me on purpose. Oh. I tell them. <laughs> oh. Every, that's why yeah, this is not. That's at the end of the agenda. That's why they did it. I asked them to move it. I specifically yeah, said, can you please move that to the front of the agenda? Okay. No. Right. No, of course not. Right. Nine thirty. I tell them they know my schedule. Yeah. Thank I'll, you. I'll I'll there we'll there. we'll see. I guess I'm tuning in to see if I get voted off my committees or not. I think you got all the supporters on your side. Yeah, Joanne just gave me a cease and desist letter. Like I don't know what you people are talking about. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't take any stock in what she has. I I I'm gonna flush it down my toilet when I get home. Is what I'm gonna do. You have to understand that um, she's confused. <laughs> yeah, she is confused. Yeah. <laughs> she said it like 10 times in there. She's clearly Which confused. One, Joanne? Joanne. She's clearly confused. That's why I messaged you. I was like, why she Joanne pulls at every question? meeting. Every meeting. I'm confused. I understand exactly what you guys were saying. I can, I'm so... She asks I, questions to make it sound like she knows what's going on. I... We, we gave them eight copies of plans. None of them have them. Yeah. You're the only person that looked at the plans. I don't even know how they can be confused if they don't look at the plans. Like everything else. Like everything else in here. <laughs> what's going on? Yeah. Like, that's what I feel like. What is going from the House of Commons? So, once again, thank you. Uh, do you have a ride? I do have a ride. We're okay. going with Amy. I just had to get some fresh air. <laughs> yeah. I'm still watching. Uh, I have to tune in to see if I get fired off my committees. So. Well, it's coming. I think it's at the end. We got a lot to Listen, go over. If they sign that, they're signing their votes away. Everybody's showing support for you. They're literally signing their votes away for their next term. They're not going to be on. I don't think Jay will sign it, and I don't think Bob will sign it, because oh, Bob yeah. voted me onto the library board even when ja yeah, Greg so tried. Joanne only voted you on because she was like, oh, she wants to let her have it. She's, I, she says, she gave me a cease and desist letter. She won't even tell me what it's about. She's like, you, I heard, I could hear you. She said, I, heard you say I don't know. Like, you have my number, Joanne. <laughs> I don't know why she decided to do that on public record that conversation. I don't know why she couldn't call me. Just now? Just now. She insisted that I, I take her... I barely hear it, but I could hear you She insisted that I take her cease and desist letter at that table. I don't know what in her right mind made her think that that was a good place to do that. Wait a minute. The one that they're... Just now. She just the, gave me a cease and desist letter while I was standing up and leaving. Because of my TikToks. Why? Because you stole $15,000 from the borough? <laughs> yeah. What, you don't want me to tell people that? that I don't she, fucking that care. That she only had to pay back a portion of it? I don't just fucking hush, care. Hush. We all know about it. It's, it's not ass. a secret. It's a it's fucking public record. Mm -hmm. If you don't want me talking about public record, don't put yourself on the public record. All right, let's get out of here. Have a good night. Before I get spied on. Hi, everybody. I'm still on my live stream. <laughs> I just Tyler's, so Tyler's, dead, right? Tyler's good. I have until. All right. Let me. No, we can still watch this, though. We can watch this. Okay. I'm going to actually check through some of my comments. Tell your friends I said hi. Oh, hi, guys. This is Amy. Hi, I'm the one that supports Jess all the time. Hi. <laughs> my people. Is, uh, what's his name? Um, Sage. What's his face on there? Sage Fire. Yeah. I think he was in earlier. We're besties. He is awesome. They voted on things without me. Everybody, Amy says hi. <laughs> Cast a spell on Joanne. I'm headed for. We're on top of it. <laughs> they all, everybody's talking about Joanne. 
we're gonna read this. We don't have to. She's what, 86 years old? I, she <laughs> says that that's damaging. Well, why didn't you call me? If you don't like a TikTok video I posted about you, what? why As don't you Joanna just text me? If not watching TikTok. I, she probably doesn't even know how to log on to TikTok. Did you hear me ask Greg, Greg, are you talking about a TikTok dance? <laughs> yeah. Like, are you talking about a TikTok dance? Is that what you're... I have to go home to the babysitter, so I don't even know if I'm getting fired off my committee. And that's why they do this. That's why they do this. That's why they do this, because they know I got to leave at 9.30. Yeah. That's my schedule. They know I got to leave at 9.30. And they're like, oh, whoops, sorry. Chief shots. Chief shots. Shots. Joanna's Facebook. She's shown up in my people, you know, a few times. I never even posted a TikTok about Joanne. What is she talking about? I just talk about Greg and Mike. But we might now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's going to have a whole TikTok page soon to herself. Okay, let me see. That's something they couldn't do. Yo, I... Okay, they couldn't do it before I leave. I literally... Um, it's 9.30. The three hours of your life. That you'll I, never get back. I literally freaking asked them to move it up on the agenda. Oh, they're going to read it out loud. I'm going to um, screen record and we're going to, I'm going to try to see if I can record the Facebook live stream because the council meeting is still going on. I just have to go home to like my children so that they're not alone. Um, but Are they talking about the uh, police uh, jobs? I think they're talking about the new police jobs. Police jobs. Oh, because the new police officers. I was wondering why Kohler was sitting there. The spaghetti monster stickers from my car. You know what, guys? Don't tell anybody. I think Kohler is cute. Who? Kohler. <laughs> Kohler. What are you talking about? Um, the the one cop. He's oh. cute because he's the son of the lady who runs the train station downtown. But don't tell anybody. I don't even know that. who it is. So he was. He came to my house the night that my husband tried to break yeah. in. Thank you. Um, and so, he, you know, he, he diffused that situation really well. Um, and so he, I've always been nice to him. <laughs> He's the only one. Don't favorite. tell anybody. I said, well, you just told everybody. So. I don't know. I meant don't tell him. Don't tell him that I said he was cute. The other cop is cute too. It's too bad. I hate them all. And I'm not even going to look at them. <laughs> yeah. You know, because you're throwing middle fingers in the air. I talking know. About cops every I morning. know. Well, I do sometimes, don't we all? but I don't know who the fuck they think they are telling me about my social media when Greg just sits up there and lies to the public. I can't believe this bitch had me a cease and desist letter sent. Wait, so that had nothing to do with the, the, um, censure? No, what? it had nothing to do with the censure. She what? literally just gave me a cease and desist letter. Who is she to give you a cease and desist? At work! She just gave me a cease and desist letter I mean, at what work. What power does she have to do that? She, any, a cease and desist letter, you might as well just fucking suck my dick. Okay. Because a cease and desist letter just means I'm warning you, I'm going to do something. Well, Did why don't you, get, you go ahead and this do something? Outside. Look, he lowered the lights, but. Why don't you go ahead and do something? Oh, don't get attacked to so police. Oh, no, never. I won't even talk to the cops. My followers are like, no, don't get. No, I won't yeah, even. So necessary Listen, I just I just understand that I work. still think he's cute. I just understand that I still think he's cute. I won't even fucking look at him. <laughs> he's, cute, <laughs> he's, look at him. he's just sitting in the audience the whole time. So I don't know. I didn't see anybody cute in the audience. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, well, yeah, nobody I, I, else probably I, thinks he's cute, but I think he's cute because nobody else thinks the men that I think are cute are cute. You have to pay cute. attention to what they're saying. But right? I only think I'm like one out of can. every 100 man is attractive and then nobody else finds them attractive. So It won't get any louder because they're not talking into the microphones. Okay. Cease and desist. How do you get to the Facebook Live? Um, go to my link tree. And click on Jessica Crowley, Jim Thorpe, Borough Council. And it's, I shared the post. It's being live streamed on my page right now. We're watching it on the phone up here. On the Jim Thorpe Borough Council. But I'm, as soon as I walk in my door, I'm going to have to jump off this. And I'm going to have to jump onto the live stream to see if I get voted off my committee. But Jim Thorpe Borough Council has commenting turned off on their live stream. They, they do, but I... don't like what people say. Well, yeah, they don't. Oh my god, stop sucking Oh my god, shut up. I'm so glad I wasn't there for this stupid cop. We had to hire two new cops 
Um, so there's like a whole bunch of cops there tonight. And I'm just glad that I... That's one thing that I'm not regretful that I'm missing tonight. I don't fucking care. Fine. Hire them. Whatever. Like, I have any say in it anyway. Rich's not even talking in his microphone. He's doing that on purpose. They don't want us to hear them. The county commissioner texted me and said that I did a really good job. Um, I'm going to make sure um, that he knows that it was me that was talking. I think he does because he was just in our office yesterday. Oh, okay. He comes in and talks to Tyra sometimes. And I'm going to be like, so, how did I do? Okay, thank you guys. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna jump off now because I'm getting close to my house, and I gotta jump on Facebook and see if I get kicked off my committees. Um, I'll let you guys know if I get kicked off my committees, and then I'll post all the clips. Um, and let's see if we can make Amy go viral. Oh yay! <laughs> all right. See you later. Make sure you post my cash app on there.